To quickly get set up with call forwarding, go to the Settings tab. Under Delivery, choose Call Forwarding. Once we're on the call forwarding screen, we want to make sure that we have the correct extension selected. Next, down under Call Forwarding List, if we do not see any entries listed here, that means when someone dials this extension from the auto attendant, it will go straight to voicemail in this particular extension. To make it ring a phone, click the Add New Entry button. From here we have three choices, number, user, or group. We'll start with a number. This is by far the most common option that most customers will use. Simply type in a phone number. This can be any phone number, a cell phone, a home phone, a Freedom Voice phone. Put in a description. Choose a time zone. And we have an option to add an extension. Now this is a rarely used field. This would be if we need to dial an extension after we've made a connection to this phone number. And here we can put commas as one second pauses, and we can automate dialing through another PBX system only after we've connected to this phone number. So again, rarely used. Once we've filled out this information, we can click Save. And now we have a valid call, forward en call forwarding entry, also known as Find Me, Follow Me. This entry defaults to 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 4 rings to this particular phone. If we want to modify times and days and rings, we can click Add Time Day Filter, and now we can choose new times. So 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., for example, Monday through Friday. We can make six rings instead of four, and we'll save this, and now our changes are reflected. We can add additional times if we want to, so maybe our times are different on Monday. And we want to do... 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. on Monday only, and we'll just do four rings there. We can save that, and now we have two separate entries for the same phone number. So if the call lands on this entry outside of those hours, it would go to voicemail in this case. If we want to create another number that it will roll over to, we can do that by clicking Add New Entry again. We can also add another number, or we can do user or group. Let's choose user this time. Our user option will reflect all the users that are currently set up in our user list. We'll go ahead and choose 800, and we can say this is a desk phone. Choose a time zone, and click Save. Now the difference between forwarding to number and to user is that this entry will always ring. Okay, as long as the phone is up and running and has dial tone, the phone will ring when we hit this particular entry or when someone dials this extension. The user, on the other hand, requires that the user has a Polycom phone on their desk that they can physically log into. So in other words, on the Polycom phone, and only Polycom is supported for login, they have to hit the login button, punch in their extension, and hit login again. That tells the Freedom Voice system that this user is available and at their desk, and then, in this case, it will ring this particular desk phone. If they're logged out, then it would skip this entry and go to voicemail. So now we have a cascading list. When someone dials extension 800 from an audio auto attendant, it will hit this entry first, ring this phone. If no one answers. It will move on to the next entry and then to voicemail. It will always cascade in this manner from the top down. If we need to do something like a simultaneous ring or a rotational uh, sort of calling scheme, then what we would have to do is add a group entry, and that's what our third type is for, is group. Now, there are no groups predefined from the beginning. You have to create the group first, and then the group will show up here. So I've already created some groups, so I'll go ahead and choose my simultaneous ring group, and I can just say let's this rings 10 phones. save that, and now that becomes my third Find Me, Follow Me entry. So it starts on the first entry, hits the second one, and then eventually hits the group that rings 10 phones all at once. And this works just like the others. I can schedule it, set number of rings, and so on. I can even reorder these, move them around. Maybe I wanted to hit my group first, and then if I, the group doesn't answer, it will roll over to me, 
as a uh, failover, it's easy, very easy to reorder. You can even turn entries on and off if you want to keep one in there. Maybe it's a vacation uh, location that you go to and you still work from there or a different office that you go to. Leave the entry off. When you get to the office, log in here, turn the entry on, turn the other entry off, and it's very easy to toggle between these. There is an additional option here for call queuing. And queuing is anytime you want to keep a caller on hold while one of these entries becomes available. So I can click callers remain in queue and now I can set a maximum hold time for my callers five minutes ten minutes whatever I set this to in minutes and now when someone calls in and dials this extension if none of these are available maybe everyone's on the phone and not answering the caller will remain in, on hold for up to five minutes until this timer expires then they would go to voicemail or until someone answers and it will continue to try these entries over and over until someone answers or until this timer does expire. There are additional options here for the queuing to play a message, to play a tone, and so on. To configure groups, those are done over under settings and forwarding groups. We'll take a look at this very quickly. You can see I have two groups here. If I want to add a new group, it's very easy to do. I'll create a test group. I choose first my calling method. I can choose five different calling methods. We'll keep rotation for this one. Save that. I can set a grace period. This is essentially a wrap up time. So after I hang up on a call, how long before my phone rings again with another call from this group? So if I put in 120 seconds, that gives me two minutes to put in notes about the call or do whatever I need to do before my phone could potentially ring again. And then the last thing I have to do is just add contacts to the group. So add new member, and this is just like setting up the call forwarding in the previous screen. I can do this by number or by user. I'll go ahead and put in another number here. And save that. And I can add as many members to this group as I want. So I just keep adding members till I'm satisfied with the group. I click Done Editing, and now I have a new group. So if I go back to my call forwarding, and maybe this wasn't the right group and I need to change this. I can edit this entry. I can make sure I have group selected. And now my new test group is reflected. That's call forwarding. Thank you for watching.